What's up, everybody? Welcome to Move the Sticks. DJ and Bucky here. This is our 2016 division preview, Bucky, and we're looking at the NFC North in today's episode. And the way we do this, we end up ranking the talent in each division, and we end up trying to figure out who the best, the best team is, who we think could win based off that talent. Now, we're looking at six different factors here when we rank them. Why don't you tell the folks what we're looking at? Yeah, we're going to break down quarterback, skill positions, offensive line. Then we can go to the defense side of the ball, talk about D-line, well, front seven, secondary, and then coaches. So we get to put them all in the mix. We're going to rank them, and then we will see who comes out on top. Yeah, this is a composite ranking here. We've worked together. We don't always agree, but we've come to a consensus on this. And, again, it's like golf, low score wins. So whoever has the lowest total, one through four, we're going through each of these positions. That will determine who the most talented team is. Let's start with the quarterbacks here in the NFC North, and I think we can all agree – this is a pretty easy one when you look at the very top of the list here with the Green Bay Packers at one, followed by the Lions, the Bears, and the Vikings. Anything stand out to you? Yeah, the only thing that stands out to me, I know A-Rod is at one, but the, the difference between Matt Stafford and Jay Cutler, who should be the runner-up. and Flip a coin. Both of these guys basically have losing records. I mean, Matt Stafford has a bad record in terms of being a starter, but I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Both are super talented. They need to get their teams over the hump before they can kind of catch up to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and we'll see if Teddy Bridgewater can move up on this list if he takes that next step as we expect him to. All right, skill positions. Again, this is at the top. You look at the Vikings and the Packers. We end up going with the Vikings one, followed by the Packers, the Lions, and then the Bears. I think that big debate, though, they're right there between the number one and number two because the Packers at number two, with those two receivers when they're healthy and on, it's a pretty good group. Pretty good group. Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, when those guys are on, we have a more fit and in shape Eddie Lacy. He's supposed to split time with James Starks. They are certainly close enough to make it interesting for the Minnesota Vikings, but the Minnesota Vikings with Adrian Peterson, Stephon Diggs, you have Kyle Rudolph, who's been a multiple-time pro bowler, and then you have Laquan Trevor coming to the mix. I give them the nod. I think they certainly deserve to be number one. And also, let's see what the Bears do. Can the Bears step up with Kevin White coming into the scene? Yeah, we're both uh, bullish on, on Kevin White there with the Bears. Ironic. Uh, all right, <laughs> offensive line here, Bucky. Let's work backwards here. Bears four, Lions three, Packers two, and Vikings number one. Yeah, I think when you look at this, you still have to say that the Minnesota Vikings have the superior offensive line. You have the big bodies up front. They can push. They can do some things. I know Matt Khalil is a bit of a question mark because he hasn't played up to his draft status, but the rest of the offensive line, being able to get a, an Andre Smith coming over, those guys, Alex Boom coming over, I just think they're superior. The Green Bay Packers are pretty good. They've closed the gap, but I still go with the Vikings in this. The Lions have put a lot of resources into this offensive line. We'll see. you got a first-round pick who struggled a little bit. In Ooh, didn't one look good. Taylor season. Decker, yeah. Ooh, Taylor Decker had a rough one, so we'll see if he can improve. And this line can improve there. The Bears at number four, although we love we love our man, Mr. Long. He's we a, do he's like nasty. Long. All right, let's go to the defensive side of the ball. Front seven, putting the D-line together with the linebackers. We work four to one. Bears, Lions, Packers. And Vikings. The Vikings, one of the most athletic, uh, gifted young front seven. Yeah, gifted young front seven. You think about the, the bell, bell cow players on that defensive line and linebacker core. Anthony Barr is someone that comes to mind. Everson Griffin is a guy who is really Eric immersed. Kendricks. Linville Joseph is someone that has come up. But I'm going to look at the Green Bay Packers. And the reason I think the Packers can really push is because Clay Matthews goes to his natural spot at outside linebacker. He should deliver more splash plays. And Blake Martinez quietly has played very, very well on the inside. Stanford. If he plays well with – the number of young guys that they're throwing into the mix in that D-line rotation, they may be a team that can kind of wreak a little havoc. The best pass rusher in their entire division, though, might be with the Lions. Ziggy. Ziggy. He's, he's, uh, he's big time. All right, let's go to the secondary now, Buck. Bears at four, Lions at three. Again, Packers and Vikings there at the top. And this time we have the Packers at two and the Vikings at number one. You know, the Green Bay Packers secondary is pretty interesting because they played the young guys last year. Demarius Randall, Randall came up and Quinn played pretty well. Quinn Rollins played well. You have HaHa Clinton Dix playing in the back end. They have some talent. I also like Micah High. Micah had made a nice interception in the first preseason game against the Cleveland Browns. They have some pieces that if they come together, they can push the Minnesota Vikings. The thing about the Vikings that I like, Harrison Smith in, in the middle, he does a great job controlling everything. And his Xavier Rose, Rose is big, like a big-time corner. Yeah, he's, he's very, very talented there. All right, let's go to the coaching now. Lions come in at number four. Caldwell has been – look, he's been to a Super Bowl with the Colts, but he comes in at number four. The Bears, John Fox, man, he's got a he's got a lot of success in the league coming at number three. Vikings, though, we're, we're big on Mike Zimmer at number two and the Green Bay Packers with McCarthy there at number one. Mike McCarthy's done a great job since he arrived at Green Bay. This is a team that's kind of really had a, a vice grip on the division. They relinquished that last year to the Minnesota Vikings, but you know that Mike McCarthy is involved. He's back involved in the play calling. When he's involved with the play calling, that offense is lights out. 
I think he gets them back on track. I think he deserves to be number one on this list. All right, Bucky, let's look at the results here. We're going to look at the offense first, then the defense and coaching, and then the overall. We haven't seen these numbers yet, so let's kind of digest this here. This is the offensive rankings. Low number wins. Man, the Green Bay Packers, the difference between number one and number four, uh, pretty significant there. Yeah, very significant. But really the difference between number one and number two simply comes down to the quarterback. We all ranked Aaron Rodgers as number one. Teddy Bridgewater came in number four. The point differential is the difference between the Packers and the Vikings on the offensive side. Yeah, well, there's uh, two very good teams there at the very top. Again, the quarterback being the difference. All right, let's look to the other side of the ball here, defense and coaching when we add them up. The Vikings end up at number one on the list now, Bucky. Again, the Packers right there. looks like a two-team race, and we've seen it now on the offense as well as the defense and coaching here. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to personnel. And it's funny, in our league, we always talk about coaching matters, and it does, but the talent is really what dictates the guys who win. You see the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers are always in consideration because they have great talent. All right, we've seen offense, we've seen defense. Now let's go to the truth here. This is the overall ranking based on talent, who we think is the most talented team in the NFC North. And when we look at the total here, Bucky, this this tells us we've got a pretty competitive division. Very competitive division, a division that we expect to come down to the last weekend, the Green Bay Packers and the Minnesota Vikings duking it out like they did last year. Uh, ultimately, it'll come down to health and who's able to stay healthy with the most weapons on the outside. I'm excited to see what happens this year. A clear split in the division there with those top two teams. It will be an interesting division to follow. That's what me and Bucky think about who the most talented teams are in this division. Bucky, that's what we think, though. Yeah, but let us know what you think. Make sure you leave your comments at the bottom of our YouTube clip. All right, let us know what you think. DJ Bucky here with Move the Sticks. Stay tuned for all of our previews as we march towards the 2016 NFL season.